Today I wanted to give you a little heads up about uh, my thoughts, uh, and this really has to do with Gold Hill, um, at least the beginning of this, and then I, I want to tell you a story that uh, occurred to me the other day as I was, um, as I was studying some scripture, it uh, reminded me of something uh, of a different story, and, and I want to relate that different story to you, but first, for Gold Hill, um, I am... Uh, as soon as I get an opportunity to speak to, to the leadership of Gold Hill, I've been, uh, uh, Colette is, is in Colorado. Uh, my guess is uh, they're in Colorado dropping uh, their daughter off for um, the Air Force Academy. And I'm expecting her back and to give me a call very soon so I can discuss this with her and begin, and begin the discussion about how we can do a service at Gold Hill. Um, I know that there's space there in the parking lot. Uh, I, I said in my in the announcements, and if you watch those announcements, that there wasn't space in the parking lot and, and there wasn't a yard. But then I realized it was also the, the, the parsonage next door. They have shaded trees, uh, and it's right next to our parking lot. So it's very possible that we could actually have an outdoor service at Gold Hill. And so as soon as I get a chance to talk to Colette uh, this week, uh, we'll discuss that, and I will give you further information about that but I can see that there's a possibility there. Since I'm doing it at Upper Road, there's also the possibility that I might be able to do it there at Gold Hill also, depending on how we can arrange that. And so that's kind of my hope. Now, uh, on with the story I want to tell you today. The other day I was reading a passage uh, out of Scripture. I was studying and looking for, um, for material for next Sunday, or for actually this last Sunday, and I ran across a passage that reminded me of a different story. And I want to tell you that other story right now. This comes out of 2 Kings chapter 5, and this is about the healing of Naaman. Now, Naaman was the commander of the army of the kings of Aram. He was a great man and in high favor with his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now, the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life, that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots, and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became very angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hands over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Arbana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servant approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, Wash and be clean. 
So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. So in this story, Naaman is a very powerful man. He's the general of the armies of the king of Aram, and he is... Well, he's just powerful. He's about as powerful as you can get in his country next to the king. He's in charge of all of the king's armies. And he was loved by his king. Well, according to the story, while he's uh, doing his raids and is doing uh, his job of, of, uh, of conquering other peoples, he uh, captures a young uh, Israelite girl and turns her over to his wife to be her servant. And we discover then also that uh, Naaman has leprosy. So this great man, this great general, this great man in his nation and his people, among his people, he also has a skin disease. And he suffers with this, but in that culture, uh, having leprosy does not preclude you from having a good job. And so that's a little different uh, than in Israel. In Israel, if you have leprosy, you're an outcast, you're thrown out, you have to live outside of the community. And you, of course, can't hold a, a, a big job uh, like this. But apparently this isn't so in Aram. Well, this young Israelite slave girl, who that's what she is now, she's the servant or the slave to the wife, uh, lets Naaman know that there is a prophet in Israel who may be able to help him maybe be able to cure him of this problem. So Naaman goes and he tells the king, here's what this young girl said, there's a prophet in Israel who could maybe fix my disease, fix me. And the king of Aram, uh, who, who really cherishes this man's work and he really cherishes this man, uh, says, well go and see if this can be done. In fact, I'll send a letter along with you so that, uh, you know, it'll show our peaceful intent that you're arriving there for this particular reason. And so the king writes his letter. So he goes, and when he goes there, he takes a fortune with him. He takes, you know, silver and gold and clothing uh, and a letter, and then the letter. And when he gets to there, he, he arrives and... Um, he goes and tells the, the, the king of Israel uh, what, what he's there for. And the king, his response is, uh, is, is just wonderful. I love his response. He tears his clothes and he says, Why am I God that I can give life or death? That I can give death or life? And, um, and so why is, why, you know, why is he coming here to me? I, I can't do anything about this. You know, he, I, in fact, I think he's trying to pick a fight with me. By, by me not being able to cure this, he'll say, oh, you didn't want to. And so, you know, you, you, it'll give him a pretext for bringing an army in. Well, uh, Elisha, this is during the time of Elisha. And Elisha is the prophet of Israel at this time. And Elisha uh, hears that uh, Naaman is there. And he hears that the, the, um, uh, the king has torn his clothes. And so he sends a message to the, well, you know, why have you torn your clothes? He's looking for the prophet. Well, here I am. You know I'm here. So have him come. And that way he will learn that there is a prophet in Israel, someone who can do what he needs. So Naaman goes, and he arrives there, and he stands in the front of the, he stands at the doorway of the house. He stands at the entrance to the house, or to the, to the yeah, to where Elisha lives, and uh, announces himself. But and here's part of it, too, is Elisha does not go out. He sends a servant out to give instruction to Naaman. Well, the servant goes out and tells him, um, he says, go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored, and then you shall, you should be clean, you should be pure again. And so Naaman is kind of angry about this. You know, this is what? I've got two rivers in you know, in Damascus that are, that are, you know, cleaner, better rivers than the old muddy Jordan. You know, you want me to go down here in this muddy river and do this when I've, I've got beautiful rivers up there. Why can't I just do it up there? Isn't that 
even better than you know almost all of the rivers and lakes and waters here in Israel. Couldn't I just go wash there and be clean? And how come this guy didn't even come out to me? I mean, good grief. He's a man of importance. And he couldn't even be dealt with face to face by this prophet? Oh, he's enraged. And he storms off. Well, his servants come back to him, come to him and, and uh, they, they, they come to him humbly and say, but, but Father, you know, if he had asked you to do something really challenging, you'd have accepted that. And man, you'd have done what it needed to be done if it was something that would have been hard. You know, if he'd asked you to cover yourself in honey and go bury yourself in an anthill, you probably would have gone and done that. But that's not what he asked you to do. He asked you to do something very simple. Go down and immerse yourself. So, he does. Naaman gets up, he swallows his pride, he swallows his rage, and he goes and he dips himself seven times in the Jordan. And as he comes out, just exactly like Elisha has told him it would happen, he's clean. He's cleansed. His, his skin is clear. His, you know, it's like he's, he's, he's gone back to being the skin of a young boy. That's how healed he is. And he was clean. And his spirit was also cleansed when he did this. This is, uh, you know, this is kind of like one of those early baptisms that, uh, um, that happen, you know, later in, in you know, uh, many, many years later, a couple of centuries later uh, in our New Testament stories about baptism. This is kind of like that. He goes in and he dunks himself in the, in the, in the river and as he comes out, not only is he physically clean, but he's also spiritually clean. And that's just a wonderful story. The reason this story came to my mind was the simplicity of the act that he needed to do. Sometimes we look at something so simple, and instead of accepting that we can do this simple thing, we get upset by this simple thing instead. And we look at it like we are affronted by having to do this simple thing. Don't be Naaman before he became clean. Don't be a Naaman. But instead, embrace the simple things that make you well, that make you whole, that makes others well, that makes others whole. It is a simple thing. It is a simple thing. simple as that. Put on a mask. It is a simple thing. Amen.